So this is my friend's F100 that I broke on the Salty Islands. As you can see, the, the uh, AI tab is completely broken off, which is a common problem on these cameras. So I have to attempt a repair on this. Now to repair it, I have acquired this. And this is a parts F100 from a friend. And as you can see, it is in horrific condition. And what happened to this camera is that apparently while hiking in Sri Lanka, this camera unscrewed itself from a black rapid strap, which screws into the tripod socket, and then proceeded to eat shit while bouncing down a mountain. So this camera is absolutely destroyed, but it has lots of good parts, including a functioning with AI tab ring. So now the goal is to disassemble this camera enough to get the AI ring out and learn enough from that to attach it to this F100 to repair it. Worst case scenario, if I can't repair this camera, I can just get a body replacement with the back door missing and the battery compartment missing, which is a fairly common thing to be missing on these cameras. So I can just buy a cheap body, swap the back doors and we're good to go. But first things first, we need to disassemble this, which means we need to get our tools in order. So for that, we have my iFixit toolkit up here, which is an amazing toolkit. If you're going to repair cameras, get one of these. Uh, we have a space to put parts. We've got my phone, which I can use to take pictures of disassembly parts. So I know where everything goes, a place for all our screws. And then here I have my notebook to make notes as I'm disassembling the camera so I know which steps and which way it goes. Also on my desktop, I have the repair manual open so I can see exactly what parts go where and how to disassemble everything. I want to make a quick point is that if you're working on Japanese electronics, you have to have JIS screwdrivers. So the iFixit kit actually has a couple of them here. And um, JIS screwdrivers are slightly different to Phillips heads. So if you're working on, you know, Japanese cameras or Japanese electronics and if what looks like a Phillips head screw, it's actually a JIS, Japanese industrial standard screw, and you're going to end up in trouble if you try and use a Phillips screw. So have the right screwdriver, people. This is held, this is wet plastic welded and held in place with a little screw. And look at that, there's the little tracks that conduct across the circuit board to tell where the AI ring is. Now, I'm immediately gonna say, I am not taking this AI ring out of this whole housing. I'm keeping this housing as a whole part. There is no hope I'm getting that back on. So this is the part we're going to interchange. And here is the, uh, the beraggled F100. Okay, it's got a metal mirror box by the looks of it. That's quite impressive. This thing is pretty damn well built. You know, Nikon's got to get some credit. Here's the front of your pentaprism. Up here is your matrix meter thingies. There's a motor in here somewhere. This is the feed motor for the for the uh, film spool take up. Some of the motors over here somewhere. So this is probably the rewind gear train. Uh, grip connector for a vertical grip. Still works. Lol. <laughs> Still all works. It's 
just goofy looking. The F100 Super Legera. We can now start assembling, clean up the workspace. So now we have our part. Now we have to do the same surgery on the legit F100, the one I don't want to damage. Luckily, I didn't really damage anything on the other one, as far as I can tell. So this should be relatively easy. First, because we're working with the back of the camera and we're going to be working with screws and screwdrivers, I'm going to tape a bit of film over the shutter. And this is just to protect the shutter mechanism in case I drop a screw or something. Because now my look, I'm going to drop a screw or something into the shutter and destroy it. Or break a blade or something. So I'm just going to tape down a piece of film over it just to protect it. So that'll help keep us from damaging it because the first step with this is to remove the back door. We'll just put that aside. And then we need to take off these, peel the leatherettes. Keep at it. Just enough to get the new face on, get the new tab. Okay. So now we're going to do the, we're going to attach this back down securely. Let's secure this down first. That's not moving, there's a problem. They are identical. Uh, there we go. It's caught there. All good. Seated well. Okay, that's moving correctly. I'm gonna put it down. Yeah. Okay, so that's now held in place. 
ring is working, excellent. Bottom, I'm going to put in the bottom screw to hold on the front face. Okay, and we just pop the top cover back down. Okay, so this is a pretty big deal. Uh, I have just replaced, put an F, you know, 51 point lens, made sure I lock it to the minimum aperture, and it is working. So, the repair has been successful. All I need to do now is go to the hardware stop, get some double sided tape, and stick back on that leather rash. Repaired, hopefully, F100. Our trees. Lens. Open up all the way. Change the ISO up. Ah, oh. holy crap, it's done. I've been at this for hours. <laughs> so, that's it. That's the AI ring replaced on an F100. Now to return this camera back to its owner and never borrow a camera again because holy crap, I can't do this again. Before, uh, just before I go, I want to show you how this AI ring works because it's actually really cool. So you can see here we have this little piece of metal here with all these little feelers on it, okay? And then these obviously move with the AI ring. Now, if we take a look at the camera, we can see that there's a circuit board with loads of contacts printed onto it. So essentially how the AI ring actually works is it just bridges these contacts across. And that way you can calculate with the precision of how many points there are on this, where the aperture is. So. Pretty cool mechanism.